Hey, it's great to be here with all of you today. Uh, my name is Timothy Ricks, and I help people become expert Webflow developers. I've been doing this for about three years through YouTube, Patreon, and other social platforms. I'm also a designer and developer at 368, an agency creating impactful Webflow sites. Today, we'll discuss unlocking the power of tokens. And you may be wondering, what are tokens? Tokens are a way for us to name and store design choices that can be reused throughout our site. Here we have a padding small token set to 32 pixels. We could apply that throughout our design, and if we update the value, it'll change everywhere that size is being used, creating a lot of consistency. Throughout this presentation, you'll hear me refer to tokens and variables kind of as the same thing. Tokens are how we have one style reference another style, and variables are how we can apply those tokens using CSS. So we'll get into the differences in a little bit. But a couple months ago, Figma released variables natively to its platform, and it opened the door for so many designers to start using them and understanding how they work. And then, of course, we heard the amazing news today that variables are now native in Webflow. Super awesome. So I'm excited to continue exploring this. Today, we're going to take kind of a high-level look at tokens and variables, understand how they work, and how we can start to think about creating systems with them in our builds. So we'll look at three things, the mechanics of how tokens work, the benefits to using them in our sites, and how to implement them with some tips and tricks for Webflow. Starting with how they work. There's two main parts to creating a CSS variable. We have the key and the value. The key starts with double dashes, and then we can name it whatever we'd like. And the value can store any number of things, from transition durations to colors to sizes or even other variables. And we usually apply these variables to the HTML element since it's the highest element on the page. That means anything inside the HTML can use the variables we create there. And you may be wondering, why not just use utility classes? We've all used utilities before for consistent styles. The thing with utilities is they're limited to only the properties we define. So this nav height utility can only be used to set a height on an element. It can't be used across other things. Variables are a lot more flexible. Here we have a nav height variable that we can use to set the height on our nav, but also the margin top on our hero. So that when we adjust the nav height on different breakpoints, both elements and both properties update unlocking all new potential. So the best way to understand how variables work is to see them in practice. I prepared this presentation before Webflow released this, so we'll still handle it with custom code, but the principles carry over when you're using Webflow variables as well. We usually create variables on the HTML element. Here we have one called brand one set to red. And to see that color, we'll apply it to some things. So let's grab our subheading, and we'll go ahead and set the font color on the subheading to brand one. And then let's grab our button and set its background color to the same brand one. So now if we change brand one, both elements should update. But you notice the subheading here is a bit hard to read inside the dark card. So to fix that, we can grab our card dark and we can update the value of brand one to be a different color. Now, anything that was inside card dark and it's referencing BRAM1 will pull the latest value. This is how variables are different from what we've had before with Webflow swatches, is that we can actually change them and redefine them inside certain elements. But now, of course, our button is a bit hard to read here. So because these are linked to the same variable, we can't change the value of one without changing the other. Enter tokenization. Tokenization is how we can name styles based on their purpose. So imagine we create a brand two set to yellow, and then we have a text color secondary linked to brand one. We've now referenced another variable through a variable. This is an alias variable. So we're describing its purpose. And that means we can link our subheading to text color secondary. And at first glance, nothing has changed here, right? The subhead and the button are both linked to brand one blue. It's just the subheading is getting there through another variable. But the key here is now we can update inside our card dark only the text color secondary. So if we have other elements referencing this color, like maybe icons inside the card, different things we want to use, we're now able to just use this based on its purpose. And we can continue to build a system for things like our button background colors, outline buttons, anything like that we want to name styles and update their values for. 
So you may be wondering, why bother creating a system like this in the first place? There's a couple key benefits to using tokens. And the main things they help us with are consistency, theming, and interactions. When it comes to consistency, we often think about how can we take the smallest design choices, things like a border width, things like rounded corners, and save them in styles we can reuse. So here you'll notice we can update the value of our border widths, of our border radius, and this is changing on every page of our site, page padding from adjusting one place. And this unlocks a ton of consistency control, especially as developers have maybe multiple border radius values, border width values they need to use. You don't have to remember what those values are. Now in Webflow, we'll be able to choose from that dropdown of values we saved. But it also helps us with cleaning up redundant code. So we've all created basically a hover effect before, where maybe we want to change the drop shadow distance on hover. What this is actually doing is creating a lot of duplicate code. So now if we want to change the blur in the future, we're having to remember to change it in our default state and our hover state, making our site harder to maintain and potentially less consistent. With variables, we can create a variable on the card called y offset and save the value we want, plug that into the box shadow, and now instead of repeating all this code on hover, all we need to do is update the value of y offset when we hover. We get the exact same result with a lot less code and cleaner workflow. So Another key benefit to using variables is when it comes to theming. And usually when we think about theming, we're thinking, what does an element look like in both light and dark modes? But individual elements can also have multiple themes. Our button here may have a ghost it, solid, and outline theme. And we may want to define what that looks like in both light and dark themes on our section. Cards can have themes, anything can have themes, and we can have multiple versions of that. But one site rarely has a single button component. So we'll usually need to apply this across multiple types of buttons. And without variables in the past, if we wanted to change, let's say, the hover state on this solid button, we would have to do that across each of the three buttons in both of the modes. With variables, we can define one variable like button solid background and update its value on hover to change across our entire system. This means as your pages grow, you have more elements, other developers join the project, they don't have to reinvent the wheel. They can tap into styles that already exist to continue building out new elements. And this matters because it allows us to tackle design issues at scale. Imagine we have a ghost it button that its background blends into the color of our menu. Normally we think, let's just add a combo class to this one element and solve it here. But we can actually start to solve this issue for good, even if there's new ghost it buttons added to this menu in the future, by just updating the value of ghost it button surface inside our menu to be black. So now any element that's a ghost it button that we drag into our menu will get this new color. And this is how we're able to start thinking in terms of systems and not one-off design solutions. The next benefit to variables is they help us when it comes to interactions. Typically with interactions, we have to select every single element we want to animate, and this can really bog down the performance of our site, especially as we're getting lots of new elements and we're having to remember to add them to our interaction to make sure they're animated. Also, if we have CSS hover or active states on these elements, those usually break because the inline styles from the animation override these, these hover states. So the good news is instead of animating each element one by one, we can actually animate variables natively or through GSAP. So here's an example using GSAP where we're only animating the HTML element, no other elements on the page. And we're updating things like button background color or button text to be a new value. And by doing this, we don't have to worry about what if we add five more buttons with different classes later on. The only thing actually changing you'll see is the HTML element. That means all of our hover states still work. There's no inline styles created on all these elements. They're just referencing a value, and the value itself is being animated, not the elements. This really helps as your site grows. I know we did this uh, design at my agency, 368, that I work for, and we created basically this interaction on this app where the color changes throughout the day. It's linked to the time of the day everyone's seeing the same color at the same time. 
and we were able to pull this whole thing off by only animating three variables on the HTML element. And then I eventually had to leave the project. Someone else jumped on and continued building out new pages. They didn't have to touch the GSAP animation at all. We were able to just keep building with these variables that were set up for all their new elements. So those are the main benefits to using variables. But just creating variables themselves is only a small part of the story. The next thing we need to think about is how do we create a system for implementing these variables? And this is going to be equally important even with Webflow's new variables feature. So when we come to think about implementing them, everything we looked at so far was giving each element a unique class and applying that variable. Not only can this bloat our CSS file as our site grows, but it's also not the fastest and cleanest way to apply styles. So the way we typically do this is by combining utility classes and variables together. Here we're taking the advantage, the best of both worlds. We can add this radius small class manually onto each card, and they'll get that variable without adding a single new line to our CSS file. The disadvantage with utilities is if we need to remove this class, we now have to visit every page where we've used it and manually remove it from each element one by one. So this is something I've discovered only this past year, is this selector where it's targeting any class that has these letters, BR1, inside the class name. We can use any sort of letters here, but this gives us a class inside of another class. And here, all we need to do to apply the variable is rename it, BR1. Notice how both cards update it, because we rename the class, it's changed it across every page of the site. And that means if we want to remove it, all we need to do is rename the class. So I've created a whole framework around this called Lumos. And now that Webflow's released variables natively, there's some things that are going to need to change about this. But the core concept is we're able to use utilities inside. And this is still going to be useful across the board. So, And one other way to finally uh, use variables is to use data attributes. With Webflow's new components, this is never going to be more important than it is now. Typically with components, if we add a class, every single component gets that class. And we may want each card to look different. So we can, from a custom code embed, use a data attribute instead of a class. And we can apply variables that we created natively in Webflow. So now if we want to change the mode on a card, a section, a button, or anything else, all we need to do is update the data attribute value to switch the mode. And the reason why this is so helpful is we can link it to collection item fields, component fields, to be able to give each element a unique style, just like so. And then here, we're able to really unlock a lot of superpowers with that. So today, we've looked at the mechanics of how variables work, the benefits to using them in our projects, and some tips and tricks for implementing them. I hope this inspires you to try variables in your own project and unlock these superpowers for yourself. Thank you.